For nearly 20 years, John Seymour has fed himself and his family from small plots of land. And now that self-sufficiency has come into fashion, he has become the unofficial prophet and instructor of the movement. He calls himself a crank peasant, and he believes a widespread return to peasant farming is desirable and may well become necessary. He would like to see hundreds of thousands of people working on the land again. From the hill opposite, Seymour's place looks like the model farm's children play with. Small fields and a little bit of everything. 38 sheep and 25 lambs, five heifers, a bullock and seven calves, three ducks, some hens, a couple of turkeys, two pigs, one of which had been sentenced to execution, two idle dogs, three cats and four ponies. A menagerie beyond his wildest dreams when John Seymour put spade to soil at a five-acre holding in Suffolk 20 years ago. It was there that he became self-sufficient. For one thing, we started having babies, you see, and uh, then this made it necessary to get fresh milk. We couldn't uh, go on with the old tin stuff anymore, so we had to get fresh milk, which meant I had to walk a mile to the village every day to get uh, fresh milk because we were in a very remote place. We were a mile from the nearest track, even. And uh, so, after a time, I thought, well, the only thing to do is get a cow, you see. So we got a cow and started milking her. We now found we had so much milk, we didn't know what the hell to do with it. So what we did was we got pigs, you see, to uh, consume some of the milk. Well, all right, the pigs um, produced an enormous amount of manure, as, in fact, did the cow. And having all this manure, again, we couldn't throw it away, and so we started cultivating more ground, and this became a, a tremendous uh, labour, so we found ourselves getting a horse. And, uh, uh, well, again, more manure, more food had to be grown for the horse, but the horse helped enormously with the growing of the food, and uh, we found ourselves being forced into a position of almost complete self-sufficiency. Well, the pig is a noble animal. The pig is absolutely marvellous. It uh, converts all sorts of rubbish that we can't eat into something that we can eat. I wouldn't know what on earth to do with my rubbish and my uh, uh, kitchen refuse and even the washing up water if it wasn't for the pigs. And anything in the garden, any sort of rubbish like these old cabbages and things here that are, that are finished, you just chuck them to the pigs and they're the best compost heap in the world. There's nothing to beat the old pig. And also, he tastes very nice when he's hung up in the chimney. Yes, people sometimes come and ask us, um, don't we feel bad about eating the animals that we've reared ourselves? And if they're sitting down at the dinner table, as they very often are, tucking into a roast chop or something like that, I often feel like taking their plate away. But this uh, terrific squeamishness about uh, killing and eating animals, I think it's a city-bred thing. I think it's a thing... People have been divorced from animals for uh, centuries now, and uh, they've, they've forgotten the facts of life and the facts of death and the fact that we all die. And it doesn't really matter whether we die a little earlier or a little later. I have the greatest respect for vegetarians, and um, most of my best friends, you might say, are vegetarians. But um, I think wholesale, worldwide vegetarianism is ecologically unsound. It's absolutely impossible to keep any species of animal unless you control its numbers, because if you don't control them, well, they're like we are, they proliferate and they get more and more and they will eventually die of starvation, and you too will die of starvation. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, the work was going on, as it does during John Seymour's many absences. The holding provides most of the food the family needs, but not a sufficient surplus to buy clothes and pay the rates and mortgage. John Seymour has always earned some money by writing, and when he's away gathering material, his family keep the farm going. For nearly 20 years, his wife Sally has been the backbone of the enterprise. If you keep animals, Somebody has to be here all the time. You can't just go away and leave them. But I don't find it a strain. It's just part of it. 
I mostly look after the animals because I think women are better with small things, lambs and calves and things like that. I think they've got more patience than men somehow, especially if they've got children of their own. They seem to know how to deal with small animals and rear them. I think the industrial world is unhealthy, and I think one day it's going to collapse. I don't know whether it'll be because the oil runs out, as everybody thinks, or not. But I think it will collapse because people... The, the awful boredom uh, of working in these factories is, is getting people down, and I don't think they're going to go on doing it forever. And I don't want to be geared up with it when it comes down. I want to be in a position to feed myself and my family and look after ourselves in a civilised way. I don't want to go back to being a caveman and also contribute as much as we can to helping other people who maybe find life in the cities intolerable. And finally, the lubricant that has cheered John Seymour through his 20 years of peasant farming, home-brewed beer. Yeah. <laughs> it is one of the many things he has learned to do better through listening to his neighbours. And here, in the home brew belt of Pembrokeshire, beer making is a fine and serious art. <laughs> George, you're the judge and have been the judge for the last 30 years of the beer. Oh, now, we Me? want. Well, we want your verdict on the beer now. I told you that before today. <laughs> no, we want, we want a, a, a careful and a considered judgment on this beer. Well, the, the best beer that's ever been on my tongue. Now, if you tasted it, we'd, we'd, uh, we'd be more convinced now. Tasted it? Yes, yes. Have a... <laughs> <laughs> 72 gravity, I say. <laughs> I'm overcome. <laughs> I'm just overcome. <laughs> Give me oil in my lamp. Keep it burning. Give me oil in my lamp, I pray. Give me oil in my lamp. Keep it burning. Keep it burning till the break of day. Oh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>